This evening's service will be presented on our screen this evening and was also available to you if you wanted a hard copy on your way in. We begin our service tonight with a responsive reading of Psalm 89. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. I will declare that your love stands firm forever. That you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the life to come. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The choir will sing, a, le- a stable lamp is lighted.
we are lost in darkness. It might seem unusual to think of Christmas as a dark and lonely time, but for many it is just that. Tree lights and the music of the season may mean little or perhaps nothing. The hustle and bustle of Christmas preparations can darken the holiday. For some people, when they look around, they have a hard time finding meaning in, to say nothing of the true meaning for, Christmas. Even for us, the rush of the holiday season may dim the real light of Christmas. We may lose sight of the light, which gives way to darkness. And like everyone in this world, we walk in the darkness of sin. Sin is everywhere. It causes us to hate and hurt each other. It causes disease, war, and other acts of evil. It causes families to split apart at the seams. Eventually, it causes each and every one of us to die. We stumble daily because of sin's darkness. The prophet Isaiah put it this way. Yes, sin affects all people of all time. No one can find the way to God because all are sinful. The psalmist David and the apostle John tell us, Sinners even love the darkness and by nature hide from God's light. Jesus tells us, Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. By nature, we find ourselves in the darkness of sin, hiding from God's light, let us join together in confessing this to God. Almighty God, you created us to enjoy the light of your truth and life, but we have loved the darkness of sin. We have filled our lives with all kinds of evil. We cannot even count our sins, and by our inherited nature, we try to hide from you. For these sins we are guilty and deserve to be condemned. But we appeal to your mercy. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus our Savior. God knew that we were lost in the darkness of sin and death, but he did not leave us lost, hopeless, and terrified. He sent light to shine in our darkness that we would be forgiven and saved. The light from heaven is Jesus Christ, God's only Son. He came into our world to be the light of God's forgiveness. Because of Jesus' perfect life and death for us, God declares that we are not condemned for our sins. Rejoice! Your sins are forgiven. Our next hymn for this evening is, Now Sing We Now Rejoice.
part number two of our service for tonight, we see that the light comes into the darkness. Tonight we celebrate the light sent from heaven at the birth of Jesus, our Savior. Before the beginning of time, God planned to send his one and only Son. Jesus would come to make his home in the darkness among the lost. The light from heaven had been promised many times before he actually appeared. Prophecies gave a glimmer of light to God's ancient people. The prophet Isaiah wrote this about the coming Messiah. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, prophesied several months before the birth of the coming Savior. The rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Let's recall how God sent the light into this dark world as we hear the words recorded in Luke chapter 2. next song for this evening will be sung by our youth choir here in the dark.
In part three of our service, God sent Christmas lights. Lights are part of our Christmas celebration. We know it is coming when strings of light begin to shine in our homes and yards in the weeks preceding Christmas. God adorned the heavens with light on that first Christmas long ago when glorious angels appeared in the skies above Bethlehem. The shepherds believed the words of the angels and found everything they announced to be true. They were the first to behold the light of the world that God had sent. With their eyes, they saw the baby Jesus. With their hearts, they saw their Savior. In our day, God does not reveal his saving truths in the glorious light of angel messengers, but he still adorns the world with light the light of his precious word of truth in the Bible. The writer of Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible, puts it this way. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Like the shepherds, we believe this word. And with eyes of faith, we also see Jesus in the manger and know him to be our Savior. Our next hymn for this evening is Silent Night.
The excitement of seeing the holy light sent from heaven in our Savior Jesus was evident on the very night he was born. It is especially clear in the actions of the shepherds after they had seen the baby in the manger. Like the shepherds, generations before us have shared this good news so that now we too have heard what God has said concerning this child. Jesus became one of us. He lived a holy life. He died to pay the price for our sins. He rose from the dead, securing victory over death for us. And he ascended to the glory of heaven, where he rules forever. Everything in Jesus' life happened just as the scriptures promised, Jesus proclaimed himself to be the light for all to follow. John writes, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the one into the world as a light, so that no one who The greatest gift found in the light of Jesus is our redemption from sin and death. Even when we were lost in spiritual darkness, God rescued us. Jesus explained this most clearly to Nicodemus when he said, Believers in Jesus not only enjoy the brilliant light of Jesus, they become lights that reflect his light. Through faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit moves us to shine in this world of darkness as we point others to the true light of our Savior. Jesus tells us, You are the light of the world, and a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it on. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We have seen the light of the Savior Jesus Christ. Every year we celebrate his birth and anticipate his return again. He truly is the promised light from God. And now he calls us to be lights in this world. Through our words and actions, we draw many to God's holy light, that they may believe in him and be saved. Our next hymn for this evening is Gentle Mary Laid Her Child.
the opening chapter of John's Gospel, John speaks about Jesus being the light that has come into the world. Join with me now in reading responsibly selected verses from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him, all might believe. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. We now join in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please rise. Let us pray. Shine forth, dear Jesus, light of the world, on all who walk in the darkness. Grant us your grace to be your torchbearers, telling the world of your love. Open the eyes of all to see your light and to follow you to eternal glory. We ask this for your love's sake, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We also join in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we close our service with joy to the world. Welcome to everyone, to our visitors tonight. We'd like to extend a very special welcome. It is our joy to have you with us tonight as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And we pray that you would return and, and join us. Uh, tomorrow morning, um, we will once again um, resume uh, our celebration of Christmas with our Christmas Day service um, as we take a look at the good news of great joy. And one of the things that we will examine is that God's timing is always good. Um, you know, one of the things, if you happen to be the one that puts the meal on, or if you're observant enough to watch those who do, uh, one of the stressful things of any holiday meal is timing. Um, when to put the bird in. When to take the bird out. You put the pie in. I was told today to remind my wife after so many minutes she needed to take it out. Next thing I knew it was still in. She says, well, it needs a little more time. Timing. Timing is everything. God's timing is always good. And that is especially true when we talk about Jesus' first coming. And it is true when we talk about his second coming. So we will examine those things tomorrow as well. I don't know about you. How many times have you heard this story in, in talking to my mom today? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can cause us sadness right now in, in 2020 during this Christmas time, stressing us out. But you know, I said to my mother, one of the blessings that she and my father both had is that they had parents who knew Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they grew up in a Christian home, and they always have known Christ. And my wife and I 
share that same wonderful blessing that as we grew up, there never was a time we never knew Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we had many opportunities to do just what the children did here this evening. My children have had that wonderful opportunity and their children right now do too. And I know that many of you here this evening have had that opportunity in your life and this message tonight is one you've heard many times. But as I said this past Sunday, every year as we approach this, we need to approach it as if we're picking up the baby Jesus for the first time. And we need to examine him closely. And I think if one of the great blessings that comes out of all the chaos that is going on right now is we should be coming back to a reality that the only constant in our life and the only thing of any value that we possess is the message of the gospel. And I pray that God the Holy Spirit will lead you to a greater appreciation of that during this, this Christmas season. God truly bless you with a joyous Christmas. Thank you.
me back to my child.